So four years ago, back in 2019, I bought this eating tablet. It's actually a full Android tablet, so you can install apps and everything like that. But the main feature that I care about, and what we're gonna be using today, is you can actually plug it in over HDMI and then use it as a full computer monitor. When I'm on my computer, I spend most of my time on my laptop, and if I want to use this monitor, I have to remember to bring the monitor, bring a case for it, bring all of the cables, bring a monitor stand, find a place to set up and put the monitor stand, and then turn it on and get everything connected. And so what I want is I want something that just attaches to the back of my laptop and functions like a case so that I always have the monitor and all of the cables and stuff with me wherever I take the computer. I also, and this is the most important part, I want it to pop up and be ready to use. And so at a high level when the screen is not in use, it should lie flat against my laptop with the screen facing down to protect it. And then when it is in use, I want it to be attached to the top of the screen so it can function like an additional monitor. So now this is the motion that it needs to go through. And it's obvious that we need some sort of sliding mechanism to switch between positions. I spent a lot of time on this and I came up with the system of little rods that can slide up and down within a tube. But it would have taken a lot of effort to build. So then I thought, somebody has to have invented sliding doors before. It turns out the thing that I was looking for are drawer sliders. They're those little metal pieces that sit on the side of sliding drawers so that they can open and close along a track. So we're gonna get these and glue them to the top of my laptop. I went to Lowe's and Home Depot and they didn't have sliders that were small enough. But it turns out that you can order anything online. So I bought these from some random hardware company and they just came in the mail today. Before I start, I'm just gonna quickly measure them against my laptop and my e-ink screen to make sure everything is the right size. And then instead of using glue to start with, I'm just gonna use command strips. So if I make a mistake with some very expensive technology, I have the ability to undo it. I actually had to redo the adhesive several times and I increased the slider size to give the screen more height over my laptop. I also added this little hinge so that when I open the laptop, I can lock it in place and prevent the e-ink screen from falling back down. Now the moment of truth. I'm gonna open this up and try this and see what happens. All right, so we're gonna open the laptop. I'm gonna extend the sliding screen. We're gonna lock it in. There's no way this actually fucking works. <laughs> Wait, this is wild. All right, so I'm just gonna plug in all the cables and see if I can actually turn this thing on. Look at this shit. Look at this fucking shit. I'm just hanging out in the living room, reading some news on my laptop. Check in the front page of Sprocket. As you might have noticed just from this clip, I'm holding the side of my laptop a little bit to prevent it from falling over. It turns out that the sliding door and the locking mechanism works correctly, but the e-ink screen is so heavy that it causes my laptop to tilt backwards. At this point, I was also a little bit worried that the e-ink screen would put too much weight and it would cause the laptop to snap in half. It didn't help that I used industrial strength solid steel drawer sliders and the sliders themselves were very big and very heavy. I tried adding some styrofoam braces to the bottom so that the weight of the sliders sat directly on the table rather than the back of my laptop. But after trying it out, it just didn't seem like a solution that made the laptop convenient to actually use. What I needed was something that worked like sliders, but was way lighter so it could support the weight of the e-ink screen while I was sitting down. I also wanted to attach it to the back of my screen rather than the front so that it didn't block the view. I thought it wouldn't be an issue the first time because the screen has these little bezels. But what happened was I needed too much width to make sure that the sliders were securely attached. I couldn't find exactly the right components online, so I decided to build it myself. But this time I figured out how to take my original design and dumb it down to something that was way simpler to make. My idea was to attach two thin flat pieces of metal to the back of my e-ink screen and then build a track, literally just something with a crevice in it, for the laptop to slide up and down. There's a trade-off here between making something lightweight and making something sturdy, but I decided to use wood for the track because my efforts to make it out of clay were unsuccessful. I used a saw to cut these blocks of wood to the right size, and then a chisel to whittle out a track for the metal siding. I also tried over and over again 
to make my own hinge by carving a piece of wood and nesting it into some PVC pipe. But the wood kept breaking and it was so small that it was hard for me to carve it into exactly the right shape. I was ready to give up and just use a store-bought hinge when an absolute miracle happened. I installed the track and the metal sliders and I put it on my laptop and it just didn't fall back down. Literal days spent working on something that was completely unnecessary. It turns out when the screen was extended, the metal bent backward a little bit and the balance was enough to keep my screen in place. My shoddy woodworking also turned out to be a huge benefit because there were little crevices for the metal to sit after the laptop was fully extended. I also had to install this little piece of cardboard to prevent the tracks from collapsing outward. All right, I'm in Hudson Yards up in Midtown Manhattan. I've got my coffee, I've got my laptop. Let's get to work. They have this nice little area outside with some chairs and some tables. And it's really just a great place to sit out and get some work done. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna open this up and get everything extended. I truly have the largest and most obnoxious setup of anybody in the park. <laughs> like, look at this enormous laptop. It looks homemade too with all the wood and the cardboard. I didn't capture it on film, but I actually had several people come up to me and ask me about it. <laughs> Mostly just out of sheer intrigue. But I had one lady that asked me some details about how I built it, who seemed really impressed by the idea. All right, so I spent all day coding on this thing, and it was actually a really good time. There were a few hiccups here and there, but what surprised me the most is that it just worked well, and it was an enjoyable experience. Like, legitimately better than working on a normal laptop. I thought I would just fully use the e-ink screen, but it helped a lot to have two monitors. I had my e-ink screen with all the code for the software I was writing, and I used my laptop monitor to open up a browser with the website running locally. The e-ink monitor is just really, really well suited to editing text, so it was nice to be able to just permanently leave that open. So it's actually been almost a month since I've started filming, and I've actually been using this setup as my primary laptop for almost a month now. I've taken it everywhere, uh, just on my couch, uh, out and about at coffee shops. Uh, I even took it and used it on a five hour train ride from New York to Boston. And it's something where it actually works well and legitimately made my life better. Just the convenience of having it all in the same case, already assembled, just ready to pop up and use has made all the difference in the world. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Obviously, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.